We turn now to the race for the White House, where for the first time, one of the country's most read newspapers is taking sides in the presidential election, at least to a degree. USA Today is now calling on Americans to vote for any candidate not Donald Trump. The newspaper's editorial board wrote, and I quote, we've never seen reason to alter our approach until now. It went on to say this year, one of the candidates, Republican nominee Donald Trump, is by unanimous consensus of the editorial board unfit for the presidency, end quote. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is Fresh off a trip to Iowa, where she in fact trails her Republican rival by an average of roughly 5% in an aggregate of polling, our Nancy Cordes has more. It's a great honor to have Ruleen supporting me. She's going to go vote early today. Ruleen Steiniger decked out her walker and cast her ballot yesterday on the first day of in-person voting in Iowa. I'm 103. That's the reason I voted early. I'm not taking any chances. She and other Clinton supporters were escorted from Clinton's rally in Des Moines to a nearby polling place, part of a highly orchestrated effort to run up Clinton's vote totals in the battleground state six weeks before Election Day. Are you ready to go to the polls? Later, on her campaign plane, Clinton was asked about her favorite world leader. Oh, let me think. Oh, no. She was expecting the question one day after it stumped her libertarian opponent, Gary Johnson. Who's your favorite foreign leader? I'm having a brain. I'm well, having name a brain anybody. Fight. Clinton named Angela Merkel. She's been uh, an extraordinary, um, strong leader. In New Hampshire, Trump fielded the same question. Well, I think Merkel is a really great world leader, but I was very disappointed that uh, when she this move with the whole thing on immigration. Trump has been highly critical of Merkel, saying at one point she's ruining Germany. Hillary Clinton wants to be America's Angela Merkel. His inconsistencies prompted USA Today to announce not that they are endorsing Clinton, but, quote, disendorsing Trump. In an eight-point takedown, the editorial board called Trump a dangerous demagogue who is ill-equipped to be commander-in-chief and a serial liar who traffics in prejudice. On Clinton, the board split, with some expressing reservations about her, quote, sense of entitlement, her lack of candor, and her extreme carelessness. USA Today did give Donald Trump's running mate, Mike Pence, a chance to issue a rebuttal in the paper to what they said about Donald Trump. He's called Trump a bold leader and argued that Republicans were also made nervous by another famous president, Ronald Reagan, uh, because he had such a unique style, Josh. So, Nancy, again, this 34-year tradition is now uh, gone to a degree, not an unqualified show of support for Clinton. The Ed Board said that they could not reach that uh, unanimously. But still, this is obviously, if nothing else, a nice Friday headline for them. How's the campaign reacting? Uh, it is a nice headline for them because USA Today has never issued an endorsement or what they're calling a disendorsement before. They've usually stayed out of it. Uh, so, you know, the fact that they didn't flat out endorse Clinton doesn't bother the Clinton campaign all that much. And they point out that at this point, uh, virtually no national papers have endorsed Trump beyond the National Enquirer. Whereas you've got dozens of papers that have endorsed her, including uh, a number of newspapers that typically lean conservative. Uh, meanwhile, the Clinton campaign response team figures to have an otherwise very busy Friday today, as we've seen an early morning tweet storm from Donald Trump, Nancy, uh, suggesting perhaps that the campaign had been conned by Alicia Machado and perhaps helped her get citizenship uh, as a part of that. We also have seen uh, Donald Trump and really his surrogates call. Bill Clinton's infidelities into question. Uh, when they uh, went with the debate gambit, is this the response that they had expected? You know, as far as the Clinton campaign is concerned, Josh, they'd be happy for Donald Trump to tweet about Alicia Machado and Bill Clinton's infidelities 24 hours a day. They feel uh, that both of these issues are 
winners for Hillary Clinton, no matter what Alicia Machado's background is. They say they weren't making any claims when they brought her up about Alicia Machado and her past. Their claims were only about what Donald Trump said about her weight. And so anytime he talks about this former Miss Universe, anytime he talks especially about uh, her gaining weight, they think that that is a huge turnoff for women. And they think the same thing about his comments about Bill Clinton's infidelities. And that's why even a number of Republicans uh, believe that he shouldn't bring them up now and he shouldn't bring them up in the debate. Beyond that, uh, the more time he, start, he talks about these issues, um, uh, it's time that he's not talking about Hillary Clinton and making what the Clinton campaign acknowledges are more effective attacks against Clinton. You know, for example, when he talks about following the money, when he talks about her being uh, a creature of Washington and a lifetime politician who hasn't gotten enough done. Uh, those are much more pointed uh, attacks uh, that do get at some uh, concerns that voters have about Hillary Clinton. Uh, but these distractions kind of dilute that argument that he's also been making. That's exactly the argument, in fact, made by Newt Gingrich, arguably Donald Trump's staunchest supporter of them all. Uh, you mentioned Mike Pence's response in USA Today uh, gets us to the vice presidential debate now just four days away. Senator Tim Kaine, meanwhile, perhaps looking to uh, expand upon the momentum of the Democratic ticket. So what do we know about how he is preparing to face the governor? He is preparing in the battleground state of North Carolina. He's going to hold up, he'd be holed up in uh, Raleigh, uh, prepping with his team. Uh, and they'll probably be uh, taking, taking a page from the way that Hillary Clinton prepared. Uh, we know that super lawyer Bob Barnett uh, who is a longtime fixture in uh, these debate prep sessions, will be playing Mike Pence in the debates. And what I think you're going to see from Tim Kaine um, is a focus not necessarily on Pence uh, and his past votes and his record, although I'm sure that will come up, but really trying to hold Pence's feet to the fire on all the issues uh, on which he in the past has disagreed with Donald Trump and uh, the areas where he seems to have created a bit of distance between himself and Trump to try to point out that Trump is outside of the mainstream, that even his running mate uh, isn't willing to go some of the places that Donald Trump has been willing to go. Again, that debate in Farmville, Virginia, uh, now just four days away. Nancy Cordes there in Fort Pierce, Florida. As always, we appreciate the time. You're welcome, Josh.